The following product was received free of charge for the purpose of review. I've not been paid to produce this video and all opinions remain my own. Thanks to Elgu for sending this review sample out. Recently, Elgu brought a new 3D printer onto the market, the Neptune 3 Plus. This FDM printer boasts an increased print volume and other improved features over previous 3D printers. I'm Matt, this is Model Minutes, and join me in this video as I take a look at the Elgu Neptune 3 Plus and find out if it's any good for us scale modelers. So starting off, I received a relatively large box in the post, but as you can see everything was really well packaged and I didn't notice anything damaged or missing as I took these items out of the foam packaging. I'm not going to do a deep dive into how to set this printer up, but if you've got a little experience with assembling things and following instructions, it's a really easy and straightforward process. The instruction booklet is really easy to follow, being pretty clear with the text and images, and all the bits and pieces you need are included in the box or in the various bags of parts. All in, it took only about 45 minutes to get to this point, where everything is assembled and plugged in. With a flick of the power switch, the touchscreen display flashed into life, and I was ready to begin printing. A little bit of initial calibration was needed, but after this was done I thought I would see if there were any files on the included 8GB microSD card. Plugging it into the slot on the front of the machine, I was pleased to find out that there was. I decided to print out this little Buddha statue model as my first print on this machine to see what it was like. After a few hours, I was pleased to find this cool little statue on the print bed. Everything seems to have printed pretty well, and so far I've not had any issues. So now I think it's time to print something a little more modelling related. As I received this printer when it was pre-release, the slicing software that came included pre-loaded onto the memory card was what I used. This was simply because Elgu had created the printer profile on there, but I'm sure that after the public release the profile will be available on your favourite slicer software. I decided to try out one of my microset and sol holders, which is my own design, just to see how it would do. The sliced file was saved to the memory card, inserted into the printer once again, and then after selecting the file on the touchscreen and tapping print, the machine whirred into life. After a few more hours, the print was finished, and it was easily removed from the magnetic build plate. So let's now try printing a few more modelling things. I gave one of my tiny T-gauge houses a go, some Beacon Models pilot figures, a display stand, and even a super large keyring. And speaking of printing things super large, well, this printer has a big build volume, so I thought it would be a really cool idea to see how big I could actually print something. For this, I chose to scale up the Beacon Models pilot figure until it filled the build space of the printer. To reduce the time it took to print, it was printed on one of the lower quality settings though, so let's hope it isn't too bad. After all, this print is going to take the better part of a day to complete, and after 29 and a half hours, it was finally done. And here it is, my one foot tall pilot figure. Despite being done on one of the lower quality settings, I'm actually really impressed with this. Yes, the layer lines are quite visible in a few places, but it isn't anything a little bit of post-processing couldn't fix. I'm impressed with how the model scaled up as well, which is a testament to the guys over at Beacon Models who created the STL file. For the time being though, that's all I've had time to create on this printer so far, so let's take a closer look at all the things. The T-Gage house, due to its small size, is missing some details like the window frames, but that is understandable, seeing as FDM printers aren't always the best at reproducing tiny details. It's not done a bad job though, and I could definitely use this on a T-Gage layout. My micro set and sol holder has come out well too. I did give this one a quick spray with some primer paint though, and the layer lines are quite visible. I think printing this one on a higher quality setting would definitely help bring out the text on the logo and make those lines less visible, but on the whole, it does the job that it was designed for. My giant keyring? Well, this was just a bit of fun, but it has printed out really well with no issues. Not sure what I'm going to do with this one though. 
The display stand came out really well too, supporting the weight of the planes with no issues. I'll definitely use some of these for some of my planes in the future. The small beacon model pilot is a really nice model. Not as fine as a resin print, but still perfectly usable. Whilst the giant one looks really cool indeed. I think I might have to paint up this massive figure and put it on my shelf somewhere. On the whole though, I'm really impressed with what I've been able to print so far. Having completed the prints, I think it's time to talk about the good qualities of the printer. So first up, that large build volume is definitely a positive, allowing you to get lots of models on the build plate at the same time, or printing large models in a single part, which on smaller machines would have needed splitting into multiple parts. The large size of this printer does have a drawback though, and that is, naturally, it takes up quite a lot of space. I struggled to do much else on my workbench whilst this was on it, so we'll have to find another permanent home for it where it could be used. I love the aesthetic that El Gu have gone for with this printer though, with the blue metal work and gold build plate, it certainly is one of the more stylish printers that I have. Oh, and to add a little more style, there is a built-in LED light strip, which can be turned on and off from the control panel. A nice touch. The control panel being touchscreen is really easy and intuitive to use, and it snaps magnetically into its holder, or alternatively can be moved around if needed thanks to the attached cable. I'll throw some information up on the screen now to give a bit more background if you need it, particularly the thing worth noting is the build volume dimensions. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, I received this printer as a pre-release sample, and I'm under the impression that this is now available to pre-order when stocks are available. I didn't know what the retail price was going to originally be, but at the time I'm making this video now, it would seem that it would be on sale for $350 in the USA, which is about £280 or so here in the UK. For that price, in my opinion, it seems like a pretty good deal for what you're getting with this printer. It works reasonably fast, isn't overly loud, is easy to set up, easy to operate, and produces pretty consistent prints with the minimum of fuss. Overall, I'm very impressed with this new printer from Elgu, and I'm looking forward to using it for some more, larger model work. Let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions on things that I could print. Also, if you want to find out how to get your hands on some of the files that I used to print the models in this video, links are also in the description for those. Once again, I'd like to extend my thanks to Elgu for sending out this review sample, and also to my channel members for the extra support they give the channel. If you'd like to find out how to join these guys on screen, take a look at the links in the description. If you're new here and would like to see more content like this, subbing to the channel and turning notifications on will mean you never miss a new upload, and dropping a like on this video will help more modelers with a similar interest find this video too. Finally, all that's left to say is thanks to you for watching this one, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.